Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems is a crime, drama, thriller genre film and is written and directed by both Benny Safdie and Josh Safdie. The film is about Howard Ratner, a once successful New York Gems dealer whose gambling addiction has left his family and career in shambles. With his debts mounting and angry collectors closing in, the New York jeweler risks everything in a hope of staying afloat and alive. The film's leads are Adam Sandler as Howard Ratner and Julia Fox as Julia D. Fiora. So, I have been, I was introduced to the Safety Brothers last year. Um, last year, I think the beginning of last year, and I watched Good Time. And that was an experience just just a unique experience that I haven't quite got with any other film that I've previously watched within the last 18 months. And I think it goes without saying that the Safety brothers are kind of somewhat the kings of, of anti-heroes and satire content and dark humour, you know. Whenever you watch their films, they're always basing it around a somewhat of an antagonist, an anti-hero, and it's like watching a car crash in slow motion. So, to further on with Uncut Gems, I think what was nice about Uncut Gems was that with this film you could see that the production value and the aesthetic of what this film was, it was all, it all kind of felt like well, it felt like to me anyway that I don't know if this case is or it's not, but it felt like the film had a considerably more more of a budget to play around with. And you can tell that just by the opening of this film, you know, that whole very elusive cinematography set piece with the gem, you know, and I thought the colours and everything that they added with the aspect of of, of of the gem itself was it was like it's like the gem was a character itself within the story and that was all very well done now as it, as it goes with Adam Sandler I can only tell you that I've probably I probably know Adam Sandler known best from films like click um, Happy Gilmore and and films like that. I mean, I couldn't, you know, I can't really cherry pick more than two to three or maybe even five. You know, there's only there's so few casts that I remember Adam Sandler because we always know him as a funny guy. And I always like it when a film can kind of do a 180 and it's got filmmakers on board that really care about the subtext that they want that are, they are bringing to the screen. And you can see that Adam Sandler had a complete ball with this, you know, and you could also see that it was it was some of a breath a, a breath of fresh fresh air for him. I mean, him as a character in this film, he's he's an asshole. He's pompous. He's pretentious. He's egotistical, and and with all within the confines of what a Safdie Brothers film is meant to be, it all works very very well. And and he done great. Adam Sandler done a great job. Um, was he? It's always weird when you're talking about Hollywood because obviously there was talk about whether he deserved an Oscar or not. Now I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I think that's a bit of a, a brain tickle to go into that into too much in depthly. But I know for one thing that for whatever reason Hollywood doesn't really like catered roles with criminals and this and that they don't they don't think that i don't think that's a very that's an aesthetically pleasing look for their brand you know so that, that's my part that's my take there but what i think with uncut gems i need to really applaud with their work is that they are they give you their films are not the type of film that incites change because it's a film about an anti-hero that is actually an asshole. Most people that we know that are assholes, it takes a very long time for them to change in real life. 
you know and if they do change it it's probably something really significant you know if it's anyone <laughs> we've come across that we've disliked in our lifetime and that's what the Safdie brothers play so well on and their films it always makes you think of it, their their films kind of shatter your expectations in general and it may it leaves you with a feeling of it leaves you with a feeling of how long could they have been this way you know and, and, and it, that, that kind of resonates with you a lot when you watch their films. I think that Julia Fox was also great in this film. I think she had great chemistry between um, herself and and um, and Adam Sandler. I think they, you know, they they were brilliant. Um, and Lake of Stanfield is also in this film, and he gives another, he gives a great account of himself. You know, it was only just recently that I saw him in Knives Out. Um, and I've also heard great things from a film called um, Photograph. It's like a romantic film and I heard he's doing great there. So there's been a little bit of a, a gear shift with him. He's gone through the ranks a bit, you know, and that's always good to see. Um, and another thing as well with the aesthetic look of the Safdie Brothers film is that it's, it's, it's obviously the colour palette that we get, the colour grading that we get without the film. You can tell the Safety brothers have got this, this kind aesthetic look for red and blue, you know. I've always looked at it as, I don't know, just maybe might be me, think of high concept, concept ideas, but I think of it as the American flag, red and blue, you know. And the colours are so kind of bright that it kind of makes it feel like it's surreal, you know, that it could take place on another planet somewhere, you know, but obviously, you know, with these, with these, with these anti-heroes, these antagonists that we thought up throughout their films, that's how I probably they would look at, that's how I probably would presume they look at things within their life, that they are on another planet and that everyone else it's just, it's just like a figment of their of their reality, and that's why they do the things that they do because they believe that they are not really there, you know. So, like their cinematography plays really well into this script as well, and and the whole thing with him being um, being a Boston fan. Um, I might have got that wrong, or Philadelphia fan. I can't remember all well, the team that he that he supports. I think that is so. I think that resonates so well with with fans in general that they look at it like as if it's their religion, you know. And I thought it was done well. Um, and I think what, what what you get yourself into when you watch a Safety Brothers film is that these guys, they know how to subvert your expectations and they know how to kick you in the nuts with just just knee jerking tension just when you think oh yeah oh, well he's got what he's wanted and things couldn't be any great for him there's another thing that pops up and then another thing and you're thinking where are we where are we going with this you know but in, in a really good way um and and you know whenever their endings kind of happen i kind of sit there and i'm in shock but then i don't think about it and i just think about the events that take place throughout their films and i think what else did i expect do you see know what i'm saying like it, it gives you the illusion that you know you should be rooting for these people you know because because they they are unlikable at the point of their decisions but because their decision making is so immaculate and they're really assholes, you can't help but think to yourself, oh, go on then. Like, all right, then go and do that cheeky deal over there. Go and uh, fraud some people over there and then come, you know. So you've got the aesthetic of the, 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 the anti hero, unlikable by decision making. And also, what the Safety Brothers do is that they make them three dimensional. So 
you know, meaning that they admire their job. They, they, to a certain extent, they have empathy to, and to a certain extent, they are flawed, you know, and they are a human being. So it's like a, a, a pull and tug between three dimensional and three by two character development. And I think that, I think that is awesome. Whenever you go into these films, it's like, it just keeps you on your toe. And I mean, this film is two, it's two, two hours and 15 minutes long. It felt like it was 90 minutes long. I watched it with my friend and we're like, was that really two, two hours and 15 minutes? Did not feel like one bit. So I'm going to say this, Uncut Gems. You're going to get a nine out of 10. Phenomenal film. And honestly, I can't wait to see what the Safety Brothers do next. So guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this review. Please like, comment and subscribe. Click your bell notifications if you've just watched this video. Um, as it stands, I'll be doing four, rev four movie reviews this, this current week. So yeah, keep on the lookout on the channel. Bish bash bosh. I'll see you in a bit.